Drive Time with Mary Wilson, Olivia O'Leary pondered the big switch. On Monday of last week, as storm and winds and rain battered Dublin, a message appeared on one of the big electronic notice boards on the approach to Dundrum Shopping Centre. It read, Oh my God, Dundrum is like totally like flooded, guys. It seemed apt somehow that on the same night that the floods rose over our greatest symbol of Celtic tiger consumerism, one of its greatest critics, Michael D. Higgins, saw his fate as future president secured on national television. Celtic dragon Sean Gallagher was swamped by questions about business checks for Fianna Foyle and about his own company finances, and the voters switched away from him to his ideological opposite, Michael D. Higgins. It was a mature vote, a vote for substance over illusion, a vote above all for a man of ideas. Michael D. has always been an unapologetic intellectual. Not that that stops him enjoying football, he's president of Galway United, or Johnny Cash, though he says, with the air of one speaking of Beethoven's later string quartets, that he prefers the later Johnny Cash. But he doesn't pander to the notion so beloved of former Taoiseach Bertie O'Hearn, one which used to enrage the late Brian Lenehan Jr., that one must hide any interest in classical music or literature or painting or philosophy in case it would frighten off the ordinary voters. Higgins will drop names like that of philosopher Immanuel Kant without a blink and did so recently in Greg Namana to the slight bewilderment of the listening locals. Even during the campaign, when he seemed to be losing ground heavily to Sean Gallagher's populism, it might have been wiser for him to have found simpler ways to express his ideas. A country where we all have an equal say in shaping it as we would want it to be, and where we think of the common good rather than just of our own good, well, that might have been an easier way for people to have understood Michael D's sociological phrases like active and inclusive citizenship or corrosive individualism. But Michael D, the sociologist, as I say, is unapologetic. He is unapologetic about other things too. Speaking last year to a group of local arts officers, a group who were greatly expanded in his time at the department, he commented that he had been accused as arts minister of being an empire builder. They were absolutely right, he said of his critics, and then he declared in ringing tones, I was an empire builder. I built an empire for the arts, and it's up to you now to defend its boundaries from attack. Don't expect modesty from Michael D. He's a diva, or should I say divo, and such stage presence is important in one who often has to be centre stage. But all his life, his notion of the arts and of the world of ideas has been that they should be open for everybody to enjoy. His expansion of the local arts officers, his establishment of a network of local arts and cultural venues throughout the state, his setting up of the Heritage Council, which works with local communities to preserve our natural and built heritage, his establishment of T.G. Cahar, all stem from his period as minister. And even during this campaign, he was quick to insist on the state's central role in providing access to education and the arts. While philanthropy had a supporting role, he said, such vital services should never be dependent on the whim of some wealthy elite. But it's as a thinker that he may be most important to us. We have never been encouraged to think. Thinking for oneself was seen as dangerous in a Catholic Church-dominated educational system, and that unthinking approach to life has led us not to question so many of the things that we should have questioned over the last 20 years. A president who voted against unbridled capitalism, against the bank guarantee, who has had a history of protest against imperialist wars and state repression and crimes against human or civil rights, is a good role model for a questioning citizenry. Our presidents have served us well, particularly in recent decades, each in their own ways. This one, as well as empathy, I hope, will throw us down a challenge that we should think for ourselves be ambitious enough to work out what sort of country we want for ourselves. And today, as Greece threatens the whole euro area, as the airwaves are full of talk of market panic and runs on banks and implosion, as we feel fearful and confused, it'll be important to have yet another good head in the Auris. A small man with a big mind.